We're back in the Red Flag campaign for the DCS Viper, and while I get the ship ready to fly, we'll review the mission real quick. In the first page of the mission notes, we see that our goal this time is to provide seed support, that is, to suppress enemy air defenses. We're going to take a wing of four F-16 Vipers, each armed with an AGM-88 high-speed anti-radiation missile, or HARM missile, into the combat theater where we are going to specifically seek out the SA-2 SAM launchers. We'll move through the second mission of the Red Flag campaign a bit faster than the first time, skipping over such things as startup and takeoff tips that we covered in the previous mission. However, always remember, they're very important and provide information on the weather, startup times, takeoff times, martial direction, push times, radio frequencies, and many other essential details. At this point, we are already well into starting up the F-16. It really doesn't take very long, especially compared to other aircraft. And we'll begin our taxi to the runway at 2110, just a couple minutes after our INS navigation system has reached 10 out of 10 and is ready to go. At just after 2110, we set off following the yellow line out to the runway. It's not strictly essential, but this is a simulator after all, and if you want to get the most immersion out of it, it's good to follow appropriate protocols. The other Vipers in your wing will each take their place behind you, with you as the lead first up on the runway. For some reason, ATC on the Nevada map, or perhaps this is unique to the Red Flag mission, still isn't really functioning right, and it will not give you clearance to take off, so you might as well go on your own. Get yourself up in the air, break to left, and begin a martial orbit counterclockwise to give your wingmen an opportunity to catch up with you. Aircraft orbits are often oval, and typically what I'll do is fly to about downtown Las Vegas and then back out toward Nellis. Perhaps related to the bizarre ATC bug, the wingmen will not take off on their own, so you have to order them to rejoin formation once you're in the air. And while in the last mission they did this right away, in this mission, they didn't begin taking off till about four minutes and some odd seconds after. I was just beginning my second orbit when Wingman 2 announced that he was rolling. So I'll cut this orbit short, not going all the way to downtown Las Vegas. Instead, when I reach the other side of the runway, I'll come back around hard, keeping my burners on a little bit so I don't slow down too much. Because the F-16 has a need for speed, and if you slow down too much, it'll drop like a rock out of the sky. Down on the runway, you can see Wingman 2, 3, and 4 just taking off. If you're new to flying, always remember to keep your eyes on actual visual references on the land. Don't become over-dependent on the instruments. I've always thought it was odd how, when driving a ground vehicle, a car, or a bike, intuitively we watch the land all around us, but when people take to the air, they want to keep their eyes glued to those instruments. I guess it's natural. Humans are not instinctively creatures of the air, and I suppose the numbers and pointers and dials of the instruments give us something tangible for our minds to hang on to. But whenever you can, as long as there is visibility, always make it a point to visually take note of what's around you. Your flying will be smoother and steadier for it. Use your instruments as an aid to your eyes, not the other way around. And the only exception should be as if conditions make vision impossible. Besides, DCS is a beautiful simulator. You don't want to miss out on all that scenery by staring at your instruments all the time. You can take a look at your wingman or any other aircraft. Using the external view, the default is F2. And it's handy here because due to the sod bug with ATC and the wingman taking off, they are a bit behind us. Because of this, we want to keep relatively low and slow right now to give our wingman plenty of opportunity to catch up to us. They're going to try to do it on afterburner and you really don't want them running on afterburner as they'll end up burning through their fuel many times faster than at normal speeds. Unfortunately, DCS's artificial intelligence doesn't seem in the slightest to recognize this problem, and it will happily let your wingman fly on full burner until they run out of fuel and crash. Alright, wingman 2 is caught up with us, but wingman 3 and 4 are still way behind. So we're going to swing around and do one more orbit to give them time to catch up to us. Unfortunately, this bug has really set us behind. We are supposed to begin the seed push by 2135, which really means we should have been orbiting at that seed point by no later than 2130. And there's no way, with us slowed down as much as we were, waiting for the wingman to take off, that we'll be able to pull that off. But that's okay. As the commander, you are at liberty to make some changes in the flight plan. 
And that's what we're going to have to do to do this all right and on time. If we're going to win this mission, we definitely need to be there before the strike packages arrive. Otherwise, Sam's are going to properly chew them over. Remember, it's busy in the air during these exercises. Keep your head on a swivel and keep your eyes peeled. And watch out for air traffic. Running into another aircraft would be a miserable way to end a mission. In this case, we'll make sure we're well clear of them by staying at a lower altitude. You can use your external and flyby views to confirm if your wingmen are in the correct position or if perhaps they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, like unnecessarily running on afterburner. Not to mention it just looks cool. All right, with our wingmen caught up, we're gonna go ahead and set up the harm weapon system now. I'm not gonna provide a tutorial here specifically on the harm. There are plenty of good tutorials, lots of them already out there. Our goal is just to learn to put all these skills together so that we can properly fly this aircraft. So just switch to air to ground mode, turn the harm on, then go to the left MFD and select which weapons radars you want the harm looking for. The mission planning page on the seed game plan points this out. There are several SAM types in the area, but you want to specifically kill the SA-2. If you get the others, that's great, but if you miss the SA-2, it's a mission fail. You want to keep your harm scanning for only the specific radar types you're looking for. This speeds up how quickly you can scan and lock onto those specific frequencies. Once it's all set up, double check and make sure you've done everything correctly. Remember the rule, double check, and if you're not doing anything, double check again. Get used to doing this all the time. That's how you keep yourself from getting into the combat theater right when you need to drop a bomb or launch a missile and realizing suddenly something's not working. Since we really need to speed up since that bug with the wingman taking off set us back so much, I've skipped ahead to steer point six where we would have begun our orbit. I already know that there's not going to be any time to do an orbit once we get there. We can make this simple calculation by looking at the seed push time designated on the departure flight form. Seed is to push at 2135 Zulu. Right center of DED, you can see the present time. And lower right on the HUD, second from the bottom, you can see the time to arrive at your next steer point. Simply adding them up tells me I'm overdue. As we are overdue and it's essential the seed package gets there before the strike package, I made the decision to go ahead and push one steer point beyond to steer point seven as it is 24 miles away and will take us 3 minutes and 18 seconds to get there. And the time now is exactly 2134. This will have us reaching steer point 7, the first push steer point, almost exactly when we should have arrived. There's no lesson here, I just thought this was very cool. Let's take a look off to port and well below us. Down there, just above the clouds between 9 and 10 o'clock, the B-1B bomber aircraft. Whatever else you may think of it, it is one of the coolest looking aircraft in the American military. B-1B is all black and is sometimes confused for a stealth aircraft, though it's a conventional aircraft. And despite its patently futuristic looks, this aircraft actually went into service all the way back in 1985, which was toward the end of the Cold War. There were only ever about 100 of them made, some have crashed, some have been retired, and now there are only about 45 left. Even in DCS, which is just a simulator, this is a rare and amazing bird. All right, time to forget the eye candy and get back to work here. Now we are just outside the range of those SAMs, and doing seed is a dangerous job. We'll know it's time to launch the harm when they launch one or more SAMs at us. So when that time comes, we need to be as maneuverable as possible. So now before we enter SAM country, we're gonna go ahead and dump our external tanks. Always remember to turn your master arm off before you dump them, or you're also going to see things falling off the aircraft that you don't want to see falling off. Just before we enter the combat theater, we're going to check in with Darkstar or AWACS one more time and make sure the picture is still clean. Darkstar, request picture. Darkstar, 1-1, one, one. Colt, 1-1, one, one. request picture. Darkstar reports clean, but we're in Redland country now, so we have to monitor that. Things could change really fast here. 
and bandidos can appear like magic. However, we're going to go ahead and slip back into air to ground mode, return to our HSD map on the right MFD so we can keep an eye on things, and also remember to turn the master arm back on after dumping the tanks. You might notice I've put my radar on. Because I'm doing seed, I'm actually announcing to the enemy that I'm here. I need that SA-2 radar on and locked on me in order for my harm missile to target it. The AGM-88's radar scanner is now actively looking for SA-2s and also SA-6s. But so far, it's all quiet. And that has me concerned. How does the old saying go? It's quiet out there. Too quiet. And when it gets really quiet in a combat theater, that means it's time to keep your ears open and your head on a swivel. That's news from AWACS we have to pay attention to. Bad guys at bearing 286, 22 angels, range 15 miles. Engage bandits. Fight. Engage bandits. At almost the exact same moment, the radar of the SA-2 appears. So the wingman will have to deal with the bandits while I deal with the mission task. You have to split your attention here and pay attention to what your friendlies are doing, especially your wingmen, as they are in the middle of an air-to-air -air engagement. That's a lot to concentrate on while at the same time you're locking target on an enemy SAM you know good and well wants to blow you out of the sky. The moment Redland fires a SAM at us, we return fire with a harm rocket. If they want to have any chance of hitting me, they're going to have to keep that radar going. But I'm not going to fly a straight line up here in the air at 30 angels. It's time to defend. To defend against the missile, we turn roughly 90 degrees to the missile's angle of attack and head hard and fast for the deck. Missiles burn through their fuel very rapidly as they accelerate something like a bullet. For most of their flight, they're just coasting on the energy they build up during that massive ignition acceleration. And because of this flight characteristic, they do their best in high altitude, where the atmosphere is thin and they meet little wind resistance, just enough to steer by. By heading to the deck, we're dragging that missile lower, where atmospheric drag is going to work to sap the missile's energy. We're also aiming to get on the other side of those hills down there, as close to the ground as possible, hugging the very nap of the earth if we can, because if we can put any kind of obstacle between us and that missile, it'll lose track. All players, Dark Star, South SA-2 destroyed. And that's the message we've been waiting for. Confirmation, our harm hit the target. The South SA-2 is down, and our strike packages can move in safely. At least in regards to surface to air missiles, anyway. With the primary mission done, I'm going to keep progressing toward the next steer point. Head for safety and bugger out if possible. Though I'll keep my remaining harm at the ready, just in case I come across a target of opportunity. Of course, one problem with diving toward the deck is, Mr. Redland's down here. And you never can tell if there might be a stray infantryman with a man pad down here as a handheld surface to air missile, or you could come across some previously unknown smaller SAM unit, or even some AAA, and you low down on the deck would be easy pickings. So you're not safe down here. The deck is not a safe place. You have to keep your head on a swivel, while at the same time making sure you don't run into the ground. We are going in a very fast aircraft, after all, and even a moment's inattention could lead to a messy end. To help you cope with a wide variety of threats, Watch your MFD to stay out of Sam's threat radii if at all possible. And at the same time, pay attention to your RWR. It can't tell you the range of threats, but it can tell you their direction. Keep a keen ear open for lock-on tone, as well as the missile launch threat warning. Remember, just because a missile is launched doesn't mean that it's aiming at you, but it means you need to make sure it's not aimed at you. Remember I said to keep your head on a swivel, always watch for threats. Just about at our 9 o'clock, there are some units only a mile or two away. And it looks like he's just launched something. Here, we're going to stay extremely low. Keep moving fast, and I'm going to try to put the far side of that hill just up ahead over there between me and those units to break any possible lock. Make it a point to always be aware of the terrain, especially when you're low to the ground. Making note at all times of what could be a threat, what you could use, and where everything is at all times. Maintaining three-dimensional situational awareness is challenging, and in fact, I think it's one of the most challenging skills that you can aim to develop in a flight simulator. But it's also one of the reasons flight sims like DCS are so rewarding. If in doubt at any time, and if you have them to spare, drop a few shafts and flares. You don't have an unlimited amount, but they are there to see you get back home. Be sure you know when to use them. 
I have a VKB MCG Pro stick, which means there are lots and lots of extra buttons to work with that ordinary sticks don't have, and I keep pitching Betty, the low to the ground alarm, on her own button. She comes in handy to give me ground warnings now and then, but when the soup is thick, like right now, I shut her up. It's just one more distraction I don't need. Alright, we've left those enemy units behind, and if they lobbed a missile at us, we've evaded it. Remember, if you have wingmen, you're also in command. Stay in comms and tell them what to do. Make the best use of that resource. I seem to be in the clear and I want to climb now, but before I do, I'm going to check in with AWACS and make sure there isn't some bogey sneaking up on me. Dark Star, boogie dope. Dark Star, 1-1. One, one. Colt, 1-1. One, one. Request bogey dope. Colt 1-1, Darkstar 1-1, Bra 235440 at 29,000 knots. That's almost on my 6 and not far behind, but this is an F-16 and unless that's some kind of super fighter, he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of catching me. And I'm certainly beyond any missile he might have to throw at me. Flight, return to base. Flight, RTB. All players, Dark Star, South, HQ-7, destroy. Dot one, kill bunker at bullseye, two, one, one, for 17. My wingmen have expended their ordnance, so I've sent them home. I'm going to continue my climb and check one more time in with Dark Star, just to make sure there are no surprises and that bogey isn't closing. Darkstar, bogey dope. Darkstar, 1-1. One, one. Colt, 1-1. One, one. Request bogey dope. Colt, 9-4 for 15. 1-1. Bra, 2-4-1 for 40. At 3-1. Kill armor at bullseye. 1-9-2 for 13. He's still back there and he may be chasing me, but he doesn't have any chance of catching up. This should mean I'm about home free, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up to 20 angels and change. Kick back and relax and let the autopilot take us home. Now that we're well beyond the combat theater, I'm going to put the ship's navigation lights back on. It's kind of bright here, but you can see the taillight illumined in the shadows. When we get close to home, the scripted AI will inform us to switch back to channel 4 for Nellis. Quote 1, Dark Star, push Natsif, UHF channel 4. At this point, you can call ATC and inform them that you are inbound. Inbound. Colt, 1-1. One, one. Inbound. Colt, 1-1. One, one. Fly heading 148. 421. QFE 28.21. Runway 21. To pass altitude. As I mentioned before, Ever since the current patch, the ATC is not working too well. I'm just going to go ahead and fly a familiar route and bleed off some altitude really fast. Get underneath these clouds really fast, and begin a very slow and gradual process of slowing the ship down for the final miles back to Nellis. These mountain ridges ahead of us, like the ground wrinkled up in a line, serve as a visual waypoint. We're going to use them to line up on a village up ahead, and the village itself will serve as a clue for when we should start turning hard to the right. By the time we reach Nellis, we need to be running a bearing of about 220 degrees. Coming in for a landing, especially if you have some experience, can seem to be a long, slow process. But the timing has a way of sneaking up on you. It's best to start getting things ready beforehand. Make sure your ILS and Tacken are on, as well as your landing lights. Just off the nose is that village I was mentioning. About the time we go over it, we are going to gently but firmly come to our right, line up on the runways, and wait for ATC to tell us it's time to request the landing. And when all that's done, it's time for the last steps. Extend your air brakes to full, drop your landing gear, and ride the throttle, keeping your speed up high enough to stay airborne, but low enough to effect a good landing. And that completes mission two of the Red Flag campaign for the F-16 Viper. As always, thanks for joining me on the Cerulean Skies channel. Stay tuned for mission three on our series on putting all the skills of flying the Viper together. And if you like what you see, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps.